Now I would like to talk about more about instancing. So here we have a bunch of our points and I would like to copy a model on them in Unreal or instance a model on them. Now for instancing, there are a few things we need to know. What I mainly want to focus on is how the orientation or rotations are handled. So in this case, for example, how this model is placed, this rail, if I hold my metal mouse button here, I have a normal, a position and an up vector. So the normal and the up here are controlling how my rail is being placed along this line. So that's the two attributes I want to focus on for my instancing. Now there are other attributes as well that control rotation. Like here is another example. I copied a box on a line and what I did here to add a random rotation is I used the orient attribute and this has also four dimensions. So that's also important to know that this has four dimensions to work. So as you can see, we have just a random rotation controlled by orient attribute. So what, what is the problem that can happen in Unreal is if you merge together our normal points and our points with, for example, orientation on them, you can already see a warning here on the merge node. And if we then show what the warning is, it will say it has conflicting attributes, which is basically here or orient. So my first input doesn't have any orient attribute. So what Houdini will do is, for example, here, it would automatically fill in zero in all the other attributes. So that can be a problem then in Unreal that some of the orientation might not be correct is because it's looking first at the orient attribute and then at normal and up vector. So what I recommend or what can be a good idea is to, say, is to stay consistent with what the output will be of the point clouds, like what attributes will they have? Will they have normal uh, up vector orientation attribute or a rotation attribute? Will they have a scale attribute or a P scale attribute? So these are all things you will have to think about before also bringing this in game engine. So the things I mean you want to focus on is the normal and up. So these are the basic ones that you can control, but important is to stay consistent. So in here, I'm, I'm going to create a few nodes. So let's start with placing down a attribute grid and I'm going to call this up. And this is a tree size tree and this will always facing up. Then I will have another one that is called P scale which is a one dimension and the standard value will be one. Then I'm going to use a clean node. And in this clean node, I will basically remove all the unnecessary attributes. So before I can also use this clean node, I'm going to disable these settings so it doesn't delete uh, points. And in here, I'm going to remove all attributes and groups, but I don't want to remove everything. Like I don't want to remove the normal information, the up information, the P scale. And if you have more uh, values, you can add it here. And then to finish this off, I will use a attribute instance. So now I will type in Unreal instance. And this is a string value. And now we can type in here our path to our instance. Now this network also at the top, what can be a good idea is to add a add node. And in this add node, when I connect it, I want to actually remove all necessary geometry and just keeping the points. So this will be my base setup for creating attributes and I'm going to copy paste this around so I can always stay consistently with what I'm outputting. So in here, in this case, since I already have a up value, I don't want to recalculate the up value. I want to set a P scale value and I want to make sure this is what I'm only outputting and then setting a instance. So I'm going to copy paste this here three times. And in here I also have my scattered points. And if we look, take a closer look at the scattered points, we can see that there is a lot of information going on over here. So we don't want that all that information. So that's why the clean out comes in and handy is to just clean up this result. And I notice that I don't have any up vector. So I'm going to enable this over here. So now 
So by default now they have a warning when they are merged. But if I would merge them now, we should do, don't have any warning. So they are not any missing attributes. So again, important to stay consistent. If you, for example, don't have any P scale value, what will happen is here, for example, we have a scale that is one and by default Houdini will fill in zero if it doesn't find any attributes. So we will basically not be able to see this model because the scale will be zero. So it's important to have making sure you are outputting that as well. So here we are in real and I want to get a reference to use for our instances for attributes. Now, since we are using Quixel, I can also show you how we can go to the process of actually finding a model in Quixel, getting it in a real copy paste the pad and use it in Houdini. So here we have the Quixel bridge. So it's just a library of all their models and you can download them and manage them here on your computer. So let's say I would look for that rail model and I can already have this one. But if you would sort of like have this one, we can here go to download, you can set specific settings. So most of the time we don't want to have them highest detail. LOD three will be fine. We can also set specific maps and so on. So I'm just going to download it. So now to export this, let's go to the export settings. So it's quite simple to export. We just kind of going to have to make sure we are setting the right software. So I want to use Unreal with this version. If you want to use Houdini, we can also have here a Houdini version. So we can just click Houdini if you want to export models to Houdini. Then to just get the model into our game engine, click here export. And now you should see here that it's exporting and it done successfully. Opening back to Unreal, we would automatically see here our model. So it automatically shows this model. So this is a rail that I can use then. So now to get the pad, I'm going to right click on the model and copy reference. Then jumping back into Houdini. So these were my points for the railway. So I'm going to just copy paste that in here. And now that is set. I'm going to do the same here for that stone. So in here, and here I have this model. So right click, copy the reference, jump back into Houdini, paste it in here. So then one more time for the foliage. So then again, I have here this model. So again, copy reference, switching back to Houdini, copy paste this in here. And now we can test this in game engine. So here we have our three outputs, terrain, geometry, and instances. I only need two of them, so my terrain and my instances, and I will also create some switch nodes. So I will have a switch node for my terrain and a switch node for my instance. So when the switch node is on, I would like to see my full terrain. So my default input will be my basic terrain. And when I have my pass on, I would like to see the more detailed one. Same for the instances. So by default, it's well off. So I will have a empty like this. And when we toggle this on, we will have a more detailed version. Now these instances, I'm going to merge this here at the bottom with my output. So that's, that's like the whole last step is to merge these together. So this is done my output with a point cloud. Let's open here also our property menu. I'm going to create a new folder for our pad. So the pad tool. I'm going to redirect this line over here and I'm going to expose this switch node. So I'm going to just simply call it enable. And this is a toggle. And in here, I'm going to use this reference and copy paste it in the other node as well. Then further, we can still expose the values that we have here if you want that, like you can expose how much and how far models should be. And what I also would like to do is to editable nodes, I'm going to use my curves. So I'm, so I'm just going to look at them here. So I have one that is called pad. So I have here pad and another one that is called railway. So pad and railway are editable nodes. So pressing apply, accepting. So now here, if I go to paths, I have an option to then enable this. So here I can now clearly see my terrain with my instancing points. Now it might happen that 
these points are actually like this weird black square. If you're gonna go in my viewport and I press the D key, we will have display options. Then go to our geometry tab. Then if we go to particles, they are displayed as sprites. And when I disable this, we will actually remove that. So we have our normal points placed around. So now let's jump into Unreal and test out if everything works nicely. So here in Unreal, I rebuilt my asset and I can see that most of it is working fine. So we have our models, our rail here. So it's nicely going through my terrain. You can also see that my terrain is, that bumpiness that I've created is also seen here suddenly. So you can play around with it if you want to have more intense or specific areas being covered by it. Now what I also notice here is that maybe this region is not that nicely done. Also, what I forgot to do is uh, on the pad, I actually had a new mask to have a new layer of material there, which I did not integrate. This should be more flat. The reason why it actually is aligned this way, and I've not, not immediately, is because also the sweep here is also going that way. So if I basically uh, roll here like this, so it's flat, then in here it would also be more flat. So now it is like more flat here. So it was basically sort of the sweep also controlling in what direction it goes. But it might have then, since I evolved it here, might have then breaked a bit the placement here. We could, we could play around more with these values and then uh, fine tune what's best. But for the moment, let's just focus on the other thing. So what I did here previously, is I've made a mask for the pad and I want to use this now further down here in my masking. So I want to include this here. So layer number three will also be included here. Further, what I would also like to do is when I have to combine it here is I want to subtract layer three just to be sure we don't have any conflicting information. So subtracting that value then here afterwards as well, I want to use the combine height field. And I'm going to subtract layer 3 here as well. So make sure that is, there is removed there as well. Now one more thing I would like to do. So in case layer 3 is not fully in range from 0 to 1, I want to make sure that layer 3 is clamped to a 0 to 1 range, just to be 100% sure that's there. Then if I go here to my quick sheet, we see now that we have this area being filtered out. So I can go here to texture 3, and I can add layer 3, and now I have this layer there. So that should be working as well. So now I'm going to save the asset and check it in game engine. So here back in real, I rebuilt my terrain and I can see that I have now also this third layer. So at the moment, it's also not that nicely integrated. So I will have to change the terrain material and so on later. But I'm focusing now on getting everything working and set up for later. And that was it for this video. So we created this part in railway and we have integrated this in the terrain as well. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.